the first goal of the game. Uh, Dylan Gunther scores, and Philip Kurashev and, and Taylor Hall get a little bit lost uh, on that play. You broke it down. Let's let's uh, check it out here. This play starts behind the Utah net with Bertuzzi being the forechecker for the Chicago Blackhawks as Utah breaks out of their zone. Their young, skilled players, Cooley and Gunther, are coming up the ice with speed. But that's fine. Chicago's got their forecheckers above the speed of the Utah players, and they're in really good position until they get to the blue line. And when they get to the blue line, Taylor Hall's responsibility is to protect the middle of the ice. He needs to protect the speed coming through the middle. And in this case, Hall should be above Gunther, which allows Kurashev to take care of the outside lane. And Kurashev should be responsible for this part of the ice, and he should be able to push Cooley to the wall and break up the play. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. And as the play moves up the ice, Kurashev gets stuck flat-footed, which allows the Utah defenseman, Kesselring, to use his speed to get through the neutral zone quickly. And as we talked about with Taylor Hall, he's now out of position, and he is behind Logan Cooley. He's behind all of the speed of the Utah Hockey Club. So when Utah hits the blue line, this is now a four-on-two for Utah. Chicago had numbers at the other blue line. By the time you get to this blue line, it's now a four-on-two. And Cooley drives the middle lane with his speed. When you drive the middle lane like this, what you do is you pull back the defenders. And when you pull back the defenseman, you open up a lane for the player coming in behind. And that's what happens here with Gunther. He's able to get in into an open shooting area once the play gets through. Now, Taylor Hall's got to make a decision. Taylor Hall has to do one of two things. Taylor Hall has to either get in the passing lane to stop the play getting to the outside, or he needs to get a stick on Gunther so Gunther cannot get a clean shot on the goal from this spot in the ice, way too dangerous. And then as you go a little bit further, you look at what's in behind the play. TJ Brody, experienced defenseman, allows Cooley to drive the net. So if there's a rebound or a play at the net, Logan Cooley is all alone in front of the net. So Brody is protecting nothing in this part of the ice right now. And unfortunately for Chicago, they leave Dylan Gunther all alone. He's got an NHL grade shot. He can score from this area of the ice. And again, probably one Morazic would wish he had back. And the Chicago Blackhawks are down one nothing. That's great stuff, PD. So in your mind, so when I watched it to the naked eye, it felt like a Kurashev mistake. But is Kurashev there reacting to Hall getting caught behind the play a little bit? He is. And I think he gets confused when he sees Hall come across the middle of the ice. And I think it freezes him for a minute. There is no question Kurashev plays this poorly. There is no question. He is flat footed. What you like to what we used to like to say in the coach's room is you want your forwards skating forward to defend. So you think of it as a little curve. So he should be skating forward and matching the speed of the player coming at him. Kurashev literally is standing still, and you cannot defend standing still with that kind of speed in, in a controlled breakout. So both of those two players. Very fast, very quick. Taylor Hall's fast. Like, these are guys that should be able to break up that play in the middle of the ice. Again, the problem with Taylor Hall, because Taylor Hall was an Arizona Coyote. I've seen him in the in the locker room and in the coach's room. Taylor Hall is going to play for Taylor Hall on the offensive side of the puck. I think he's a good person, but I do think he thinks he drives the offense. He wants the puck. So he's going to chase the puck all over the ice. So you better to be able to read off of Taylor Hall. So I, I hate to say he made a mistake. Taylor Hall wanted the puck. He sees the puck, he's chasing the puck. He's going to get the puck. In a true tight system, he's got to protect the middle of the ice. And one of the things that Chicago fans can be hopeful for is one of the hardest things to do at the start of this season is learn how to defend the rush. Rush reads are hard because it's so much speed and it's about repetition. So I think they will get better as the season goes on. It's just unfortunate that this happened so early with some of the better players, more experienced players on the Black Hawk roster had to give up a goal like this so early in the game. Yeah, I, I I feel like this this season. I think we we all kind of expected this team to kind of hit the ground running with a lot of the the veteran presence coming in and not taking into consideration the amount of like gelling needed to happen, needing to know where guys are going to be, needing to know tendencies and who you're playing with. I think at least for from my perspective. I felt more like these guys know what they're doing. These are well-seasoned NHL veterans. These are 
some of these guys are Stanley Cup champions. Some of these guys are former MVPs. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll know what to do. But there's a lot of taking into consideration offensive and defensive tendencies of these new guys that you haven't had time to, to play with. You only played with them for a few periods in the preseason, and then, you know, you mix up things going into game one, and there's still some some getting to know you time. So your point about Taylor Hall, um, you know, we only saw it. He's basically a new player this year. We only saw him for 10 games last year. Yep. Right. So even though he's been on this team, quote, unquote, his tendencies are still new to a lot of these guys. So it's it's – a lot of that, both offensively and defensively, not just chemistry, but also like positioning wise, like that's going to take a lot of time. And I think that that's something that might have been overlooked for this team coming into this season. Yeah, especially like Kershev played so much with Bedard last year, and Bedard is a very high Q hockey player. He's young, but he's, he knows where to be. And Taylor Hall, I don't want to call him erratic, but he's going to follow the puck. And, and Bertuzzi, honestly, you don't know where the hell he's going at any time. Like he's, he's all <laughs> speed and he's coming at you. Even on that, that play, he's chasing the puck down, down his F1. And maybe he's supposed to, but this line, Kershev's going to take some time. Like he's playing with two players that, that play with a lot of energy and are kind of all over the ice. So I do believe that line, the second line, as it were, a most experienced line, but I think they're going to have some growing pains there until they really figure out how they're going to play together. Once they do, this could be dangerous because Bertuzzi is going to get to the net. Taylor Hall's got the speed and the offensive skill and knack to get the puck to that area. And you, you saw what Kurashev has the ability to do a season ago. So I like this line. I think it's the first time in a while Chicago has had two lines at least that they can throw on the ice. And Jason Dickinson had a good game too. So I, I think this is that it bodes well for what they have the ability to do up front in, in their top 12 forwards. It just hasn't happened yet. Well, real quick before I know we got a break zone coming here in a couple minutes. So you, you mentioned Brody on that play and yeah, that wasn't a great debut for TJ Brody on the Blackhawks. And that was kind of a, a, a signing that we were all kind of like, uh, okay. Cause you, you had already brought in Martinez at that point. It was kind of in the day. And then here's two years of TJ Brody. And I don't think anybody uh, was super excited about it, and they're even less excited about it after that first game. But accurate, the Blackhawks' defense. When you broke down this game, the six defensemen out there overall, how would you think they played that game? Because it's a concern here. Of you know, outside of Jones and Vlasic, it's kind of touchy. And is there are there reasons to be hopeful that? the defense as a whole gets better as the season goes on. I, I think so. And I, we, you talk about Seth Jones and we talked before we went on air today about the minutes that he's eating and has to eat for the Chicago Blackhawk team. You worry that a guy trying to eat 25 to 30 minutes a night, every night for 82 games is daunting. And you'd like to see someone step up and help take some of those minutes. And, and but, but Martinez, Brody are guys that are supposed to help do that. They're experienced defensemen that need to help release some of those minutes. I will say this defense is better than where they were a year ago. And and, and that's honestly, I, I, this is going to sound awful. might not be saying much because last year's six <laughs> defense, it was, it was tough. You had a lot of young players in that lineup last year, and, and it just – you were hoping Korchinski gelled a little bit sooner, but I think Korchinski's in the right place right now. I, I do think this defense will get better. I do think it's going to take them some time. They look like they were lost at times in the defensive zone. There's a lot of point – offense is easy uh, out of training camp. You just put the puck over the boards and play. Uh, defensively, it's systems. It's knowing who's supposed to be going where. And I did feel that their defensemen were lost at times, but you're coming from different systems and you play the puck differently wherever you played last year. And that takes more than one game. So I am hopeful that they will get better uh, because I do think the experience they have back there makes them a better six than they were a year ago. All right, we've got positive stuff to talk about too, <laughs> including a really nice play from Connor Bedard coming up next. But we got to hit the break zone first. Make sure you're following... PD on Twitter at S Peters Hockey. Make sure you're listening to him on the PHNX Hockey Podcast, the All Utah Hockey Podcast. PD's everywhere. He's all over the network. He was on What Chaos uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, so check out PD everywhere on the All City Network. <laughs> 